All right. Hi, Sriran. Yes. Hi, Azina. Welcome back. How are you? Good, good. How are you? I'm great. Uh, okay. I think we'll, uh, we don't have much time today. Let's uh, dive right into it. Uh, so last time we talked, I think we missed talking about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I just realized that I'm going through a stage of transition in my life. I'm probably at the lowest point in my life. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> this pandemic yeah. time has been hard on many of us. So I think many people are experiencing the crisis and especially I think you moved to another city, so I totally understand that. I've been that in that process for the last three years, so I'm still adjusting. So I can maybe give you some tips on that. Hey, yo, yeah, absolutely. The main reason why I invited you again is because I wanted to know from you. I wanted to learn from you because last time we missed talking specifically about adversity, overcoming and mainly success. You know, mm -hmm. that's something I'm looking for, success. And you are someone that's successful. So I think you can tell me one or two things about overcoming and success. So my question would be, how did you become the person that you are today? Well, I think this is a very good question. And I think it's like a long way of uh, successes and failures. And because whenever you say that somebody's successful, I'm sure that that person basically feels that they're not successful. <laughs> Like what? Who me? I'm successful? No, I still don't have my Lamborghini and uh, <laughs> Tesla or my personal Tesla. Well, you know, Walter Color. But still, I think um, if uh, you always have to remember to keep the balance and like value yourself, your ups and downs. Because I think I was trying to analyze my story, and actually I've had down uh, like downfalls for a few times, and like those crises they always precede the development because when we feel a comfortable, like when we live a comfortable life, we're not that motivated, to be honest. Like, I think the hard life is the best motivator. And that's why when people uh, live in their, like they experience the hard times in their life, they always um, dive deeper in themselves and they, they, they always have to face the problems and make choices because you can solve problems in many ways. Sometimes it's harming other people and, you know, taking away from others and or maybe taking away it from your own self. But because for me, it's always important. I have I live up to this code of honor. That's why I always think that whatever happens, what matters most, it's uh, how honest you feel about yourself and your actions. So I think that's the best um, criteria that I always apply because you can solve problems in a different way. So if you can solve the problem the way that even if you are not the best winner, the, it's not the best, you know, achievement, uh, you still can like the biggest value is to keep uh, yourself clean and to keep your, your conscience clean. So you are honest with yourself. So um, and yes, uh, I think the biggest downfall was 2014, if you don't count this year's <laughs> because there's a lot of transformation now, but it's it's not as obvious. In that period, it was like more obvious because uh, I had a job, like it was my first job. I was rather lucky. I was working in a very good company. It was like advertising company. And I had uh, straight away, the boss liked me. He's like, oh, she, she likes, we had similar vision. And uh, it, although I didn't have experiences, uh, he offered me a good salary and like good position. So I was respected in the company and uh, I liked the job because I sometimes I had a moment where I had to talk on three phones at the same time. So I had to control the uh, the designing department, the uh, like uh, paperwork with the money and all those, you know, income outcome stuff and with uh, with um, the production line. And I had to be on like that, that person who uh, holds all the threads in Everything. their hands. And yes, and uh, I'm not the boss, but like the main manager who controls the production. And there was like a lot of stuff and the company was growing. That's why I was constantly asking for help or assistance. Uh, like maybe right. a, a help, yeah, some assistant or something. But the company leader didn't quite understand that that was going on. And like, he's like, oh, everybody were doing this job before you. Why why don't you do it all? Because it's a lot of work and it's getting, you know, more and more. <laughs> yeah. So, and, um, but after a year, I got bored. The work was uh, like really requiring. That's why after one year, I got bored because this is not my company. I'm not growing my income. Like the, yeah. the income is not growing and like the company's growth is not, you know, the best motivation. So I decided mm -hmm. to move on. 
and to switch to something else and I switched to a job that wasn't the best choice but at least I wanted to try the night shifts my whole life because I'm a night owl so it was mm -hmm. like a, an international hotel where I had like more practice of English because I didn't practice English in my uh, previous job I, I only translated manga and some comic books for free <laughs> like it just for practice had a couple of translations at that time it was 2012 so once I changed my job and it wasn't I was not very happy there because the boss really didn't like me she was picking up like on anything I knew that the quality of a high high qual how to perform a high quality job because I've been working in America and I had like high standards but at the same time she was just like trying constant she was just toxic <laughs> I'm not going to um you know yeah. move around she would yeah. say oh when you pick up the phone why don't you smile or why is your <laughs> not as happy what? I'm like what the hell it's like it's Midnight, what am I supposed to be happy when I pick up the phone? I said everything that I was supposed to say, oh, blah, 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 blah. Like, but still, she was like, oh, why don't you wear the lipstick? I'm like, why would I wear the lipstick? I'm like, I yeah. never wear a lipstick because whatever. So, why do you care? And the period was, well, yeah, because she was pretty and toxic. And um, yeah. so, it was okay because it was just still an experiment. I was fine. The place was, uh, you know, beautiful area in the recreational area. So I would walk around and I liked the night shifts when I have, you know, I started uh, uh, studying German. I'm like, intrigued again. I turned on the Pimsleur system. After a couple of classes, I'm like, oh my God, that's going to be hard. Like the German <laughs> words are very long and I have yeah. like a slight form of dyslexia and I don't like long words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like speaking, but so in Schrödinger Z was okay. I'm sorry, excuse me. Spray from the Deutsche and something like that. Yeah. But um, then I think the biggest change happened that my father actually very quickly he got sick and um, he he passed away on the first of um, uh, January and that was very sudden and like a uh, general state of my life was really low because our father was a uh, very uh, strong person physically and like a very good uh, role model and mm -hmm. he always take took care of my mom and my my four like you know there are four sisters in the family so he always would take care of any everything and all of a sudden he died and like it was like a very huge and unexpected loss for all of us so I think that was like the hardest period in my life where, where I hate my job uh, my, my, I, I, I had friends from my previous job so at least my friendship was okay and um, I was dating some, you know, shady guy who actually, uh, like, we've been dating for four years and then still got divorced after two months. So it was like a terrible period of time. And um, my father died and, like, I had, revalu I had to reevaluate everything in my life. And, like, um, so I decided to quit that job and, like, to start all over again. And I started mm -hmm. to quit all my jobs to where I work for somebody and start teaching English. So... Before that, I all my friends, they were trying to convince me that I'm ready to teach English. And I said, no, I'm not ready. You have to be super perfect. You have to be that, you know, bearded master in the mountains to teach something because it's like it's a big responsibility and everything. And, yeah. But there it was like a slight push from them. They said, well, you don't lose anything. So, yeah, I started my new way from that on. And it was a hard period, but still it was the first uh, path to success. After six months, even like starting from New Year's when the season is really low, after six months, I, uh, I achieved the same like amount of salary, like the same salary that I used to have in the um, in my best, you know, um, position in the company. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the hard thing to figure out, though, because uh, mm -hmm. it's hard to motivate yourself when you're going through that pain. You know, it's easy to not do anything, you know, people find it hard to even get out of bed when two, three, four things uh, like that hit them, you know, everything um, is wrong. Mm -hmm. So how did you motivate yourself to build this new business or this new teaching thing? Uh, well, as I said, I think we, our life and happiness and overall well-being always consistent stands on different columns. It's like a roof on a column, like those ancient, uh, Greece, Greek, uh, buildings. And when you have like seven columns and like six of them are okay. And just one is ruined. 
everything is still still fine you can keep on mm. but when they're like four comms out of seven are you know ruined or cracked that's where it gets more difficult but you always just have to remember that there's like a complex of different factors and all you have to do is just like no keep the vision and keep the path in your head that i all i have to do is to pay attention to each of those columns and like walk around them taking care of them so that way i can rebuild that foundation and come come back to um you know that stable uh situation i think it's really hard to reach the stable situation if you ask people are you happy i think uh, the majority of people will answer happy but they're they like I think many lying. of uh, the, yeah, not lying, maybe um, happiness is something fundamental. It's a, it's a, it's a state that has to be long term. It's just not fun. It's not good mood. It's yeah. overall stability of all those, you know, uh, columns that I mentioned. So I think when, when some columns are ruined, all you have to do is, first of all, you have to look at the things that you still have, you know, standing there. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at the positive side because you you tend to lose the um, the mental stability because you start seeing everything in black and white and mostly yeah. on the black side. And uh, the same things, you can't just see them. I know this feeling of depression where even thinking about positive things doesn't make you feel happier because you yeah. can't see them uh, anymore. Like you are almost uh, colorblind there. So all you have to do is like start with that. It, if, it, if there's something 50-50 situation that helps and you, you are okay, so you can use that resource, like that good mood, that you know, motivation to keep working on those like ruined columns little by little. If it's a job, you try to think about the, you know, the, the future, how am I supposed to get a job? Like maybe I should work on my CV or maybe if it's a large thing that you, you can't handle because you don't have enough resources, start with small things like, okay, I'm going to finish my CV tonight. Okay. It's going to be a template, but it's going to take like one hour. I, I can't yeah. do that for one hour. I still have the powers and then you can like and doing the same thing all over the place and start to consciously create those resourceful like, you know, uh, solutions for achieving energy. So if you have some troubles, talk to your friends, like social connections are really, really strong and very valuable in our lives and our mental stability. That's why I think, mm -hmm. um, finding yeah. your f reunion with your family, spending time with those relatives that you really like, uh, visiting some kids that you, uh, your nephews or nieces, you know, just spending time with them and like spending time with your friends, even if you complain, even if you feel like crap, I think you get, that support that you get, like at least helps you to stay on the surface to float. And then when you get that energy, try to use it for some difficult purposes. So it's just like a balance of energy. You take the, uh, I'm an accountant, so I guess that's the way my brain works. <laughs> you always have the passive and the, the assets and the liabilities. Mm -hmm. So you get from the assets and use them for your mental stability to uh, get to the liabilities and start like little by little, you have to, you know, get that balance back into some stable position. So it's hard when you a lot of columns are ruined. It's hard when you have only two columns of out of seven. That's really hard. And that's why you have to um, always ask for help if you can. If you can afford, you know, a psychologist, maybe a psychologist, if you can't afford it, your friends, if you don't have friends, uh, read books or like uh, play games, like find those things that inspire you, that uh, give you that resource of energy, that, you know, positive um, thing, that something that makes you feel like that person you want to be in the future, like that vision. I think the mm -hmm. vision is a, that exactly. um, that ability of being able to try that suit on, like to imagine your personality in the future that you will admire, take that suit and put it on and then try to act as if you are that person and uh, that helps and that supports because everything is just in our whatever works as i say like um <laughs> if it works it ain't stupid even if you use the strangest techniques for making yourself stable uh, sometimes i i lived in those places where there's no you know uh play around with those oh just go and get some positive thinking and blah 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 no you just don't complain you go and work <laughs> so no. And there's like positive motivation and negative motivation, like the donkey. If yeah. you imagine a donkey, 
it's like two sides. You either follow the the carrot or you are being, you know, uh, hit by a stick. So uh -huh. <laughs> stimulus is actually was the name for that stick. I think that's where it comes from. So both works. Oh yeah, definitely. That completely makes sense. Um, yeah, something that you mentioned because uh, when you're, you know, at that point in your life. Um, the only way uh, your situation is going to change is if you take action for it. You know, you have to create vision where you want to go or who you want to become. And if you, when you have your vision, your moral obligations come from that vision, right? Like the daily yeah. steps that you need to step on in order to reach there. Yep. And um, whenever it is hard to motivate yourself when you're not feeling like it, you know, all the trauma, all the depression, all, all, or all the negativity is coming up and it's um you know it makes you a victim you know it just i don't want to do anything i don't want to work and you just come up with thing. excuses yeah you you would rather do something expedient rather than working on your uh, disciplines mm -hmm. so yeah on those times if you um like you said you know uh, either if you work uh, you're gonna get there your situation is gonna change but you also need a picture of what happens if you don't put in the work and what if the things get worse because that's exactly. definitely going, I was to, going to happen to say, yeah yeah because i talked mostly on those standard techniques for positive lifestyle but there's always like you can get the job done by negative things too like you can definitely. motivate yourself to be successful just because you hate that guy and you want to be better than him still works for the goal yeah. for yeah in in that sense it still works why not you can get angry with, with yourself and with life like i'm not going to be the victim of life i'm going to do this and this and that like i might uh, yes I've, I've lost my father but there's still my family i'm going to take responsibility for my family and that you know um show them the way and like uh, be the better like stronger person in my life or maybe um, sometimes you can get angry. Nobody understands me. Nobody, yeah. uh, you know, supports me. So that's where the columns are not, you know, there are not too many of them. Sometimes you can use that dark energy that is, um, yes. when I imagine ch chakras, I even imagine that like dark energy at the bottom of our uh, uh, spinal column. Because um, if you think about it, amygdala is the like the part of your brain that um, that is responsible for fear and motivation. Guess what? It's the closest to your brain, to your limbic system, because historically mm -hmm. it was one of the most important functions. So fear is seen as negative, but this is actually one of the strongest, energetically strongest uh, resources, because when people are afraid, sometimes they do things that are almost like, uh, you know, supernatural. Oh, I just jumped over that fence and I couldn't even imagine how, would, mm -hmm. how I could do that. Well, oh, because you were afraid. And your yeah. body can get those resources to solve the problem. So mm -hmm. for problem solving, anything works. If you um, if you ha can't afford the positive things, that's the best way. If you can't, uh, I think you, we all want to survive. We all want to um, stay alive. I think that's why maybe sometimes you can use some other techniques if they work. And over time, you can switch to some other techniques. So whatever works. Yeah, definitely. Whatever works. And I think uh, if that didn't happen, you also wouldn't be where you are today, probably. Definitely. As I said, comfortable uh, um, zone, comfort of, um, yeah, I think the comfort zone is, is good. That's where we want to be. We want to feel comfortable. We want to feel happy. But at the same time, happy people are not as motivated, especially in the no. majority of the world. Because in many societies that are egalitarian almost, yes, in Denmark, in Sweden, maybe some countries that, are, that have very healthy um, systems like economical systems and uh, social capital and that system, you know, country is large, you can afford that. But in the majority of countries, like there's so much competition among people that there's no time to think and to, to feel pity for yourself. And it's like either win or lose. So sometimes I think it's important to um, remember about the, that crisis always precedes the, the biggest boost of, um, you know, of development. So, yeah, yeah, we always should remember about that. Yeah, 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 That's absolutely. The point of exactly. And uh, that completely makes sense. Uh, it, it's, it resonates with me because uh, you said that people, when they are happy and, and they're complacent, they're in comfort, you don't want to do anything. You don't want to you you really don't want to work hard or you, 
yeah, nothing. I'm happy. Why should I work? But when you are going through darkness, going through pain, I need to do something to get in a good place. I need to do something to improve my life. And that's when you start taking action. You do something, you know? So I think mm -hmm. that darkness and that pain and that adversity is necessary. Plus, as a human, it is necessary that necessity pushes you, you know, because you have to take yeah. action. Otherwise, you're, it's not going to change. Nobody's coming to save you in that darkness. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I think you, you mentioned this, the main thing that the victim, victimization of yourself or taking responsibility. I think that's the key because pe many people should remember, especially parents who raise their children. Um, I think it's really important to understand that freedom equals responsibility. If you don't give responsibilities to your children, that you don't you steal their freedom. And again, if you give too much freedom, sometimes you um, may lose the connection. But still, I think respons taking responsibility for your life is uh, it's the main point. And mm -hmm. I think, to be honest, I think not all people are created maybe to um, do great things. So yeah, it's it's always that little. Uh, a unique combination that every person has. So if you have that strife, if you have that, you know, uh, vision in your head, what you want to have, if you're able to take responsibility, uh, which is not, I think it's hard for many people, instead of taking responsibility, sometimes it's easier to uh, come up with other coping techniques. For example, mm -hmm. like for children, taking, they are unable to take the responsibility for their parents' relationship, for example, right? So mm -hmm. for sometimes their coping techniques is to get sick. So that way, yeah, their parents come together and something. So there are many, mm -hmm. many different coping techniques. So I think, um, yeah, that's why you can you can talk about it for so so long because there are so many different techniques. All you do is you collect the the little you know first aid kit for yourself. What helps you? So I think that's really important to. Oh yeah, that's probably a tip that I would give. Like it's always important to know what your pluses and minuses are, what's your weaknesses and you know strong strengths are. Because mm -hmm. surprisingly, many people don't see their neg negative sides or too much. Like they look at the negative side too much, and that way they uh, devalue themselves. And like you know, um, it's always important to keep both things. Sit down and write this uh, the list of things that you like. Something that, you know, gives you that resource of being happy. I like playing games or maybe I like to drink hot coffee in the morning and look into the window when I'm alone. Or maybe to have those little things that uh, actually give you that energy. So, or maybe yeah. write, sit down and write the things that you hate, something that you don't like, or maybe some things that you have to do or should do, but you, for some reason you're like, you know, trying to stall those things for later. So it's always good to combine. Get some more energy and solve the problems, like uh, according to the energy level that you have. If you have a higher energy and you're like ready to do things, um, give some, take something that is going to be a little bit more challenging. If not, if you're depressed, it's always uh, important to respect that too. Like respect yourself being weak, respect yourself for, um, you know, at those moments where you have to ask for help. Not everybody can ask for help. Every, you know, right. um, some people treat themselves too harshly and they say, oh, I should do this and that and never, you know, complain. So sometimes I do. it makes it harder. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, asking for help is good. It's, it's not something bad because you can always think about that. I'm going to grow and I'm going to pay, repay that person. So pay, you know, that, that um gratitude that you feel to them in the future or maybe to some other person who's going to be younger a lot of people helped me when i was younger and i was traveling in states and like a lot of people treated me very well and now when uh, i had some students and i tried to do something good for them they were like surprised like oh why would you do that for me I'm, mm. i feel flattered but it's just i can't understand your motivation i said well a yeah. lot of people helped me so i'm now i'm that person who's in a position to help you so yeah, it's just a circle uh -huh. of um, kindness. You don't have to feel guilty. Just accept it. And later on, when you become that person that you um, want to become in the future, you can give back and pay back to somebody else. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Also, I would like to go back a little bit on the thing that you said, the responsibility, you know, accepting mm -hmm. the responsibility. Uh, it's like a lifting a load voluntarily. And then you cannot give yourself a way out. You know, you have to stick to your disciplines and that bad time is the opportunity to develop characteristics or qualities in your character like discipline, like austerity, 
right? Exactly. All of those. Exactly. As you yeah, said, and... lifting weights. If you go to the gym and you want to become yeah. a weightlifting champion, you have to show up and you have to work hard uh, in order to prepare your body for that uh, challenge that you're going to take. Because yeah. if you don't have consistent training, you're not going to have the power to do things. I think discipline is something that is um, maybe it's not talked about uh, recently. Everybody thinks about, you know, thoughts are uh, material. I'm just going to meditate on happiness and uh, no. success and everything's going to be great. <laughs> it's good if you keep doing things. <laughs> so yeah. it's always important to combine both where you can think and create and vision, you know, but at the same time, you are able to concentrate and really focus on the boring things and do things. Also, that's a challenge because there are unconscious forces that are going to try their best to distract you from doing good for yourself. You know, the temptations, mm -hmm. if you sit at your table to work, there's going to be distractions and it's um, you're going to have to overcome your own mind a lot on a daily basis. And you're going to have to do the things that you hate to do to get to where you want to go. And it's not going to be you. You're not always or. Uh, you're not going to enjoy you, your work every day. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you're not going to feel like it, but it's a choice. You know, you can either mm -hmm. stick to it, you can keep working towards your vision, or you can F off, you know? Uh, yeah, I, I would also uh, recommend, like, what I do is actually when people say, oh, I'm so lazy, I, uh, it's so difficult for me to learn things. I'm like, we are all lazy. It's, the secret is to being able, being yeah. able to trick yourself. <laughs> So yeah. I make it a game. I, uh, for example, I had uh, one period where I had to write the dissertations for English students. And that was a really big challenge for me because <laughs> I have never studied um, things at such a level where I had to use academic English language and then also look for information, uh, try to overcome those, you know, uh, paid articles or unpaid articles. The scientific world of dissertations was, you know, a big uh, challenge for me. Even though I didn't have to look for those materials in the beginning, I all I had to do is just like take one or two pages of text, which is like 500 words and just rephrase them. So that way, the you know, there is no um, what was it? Uh, plagiarism. So it's like plagiarism proof stuff. And it, although the, the work was very typical and easy, but it was so hard to do this. And like I would sit and like I spent half an hour for like two page, um, two two lines. And I'm like, this is not going anywhere. <laughs> so I, I, I was like, my brain would just like try to. Oh, I think it's time for eat to you know to mm. eat something. Oh, I think I feel sleepy. Mm, do you remember that amazing game we could go yeah. and game you know for like a little bit? Oh, I wish I had like you know Twix or Mar Mars now or some like Snickers. I'm like, Shut maybe up, we should. Mark. Yeah, maybe we should come yeah. back later. Yeah, so I, I I came up with these little techniques that I would do. Um, I would just like trick myself into thinking that it's a game. Like, uh, okay, I'm just gonna put the timer for ten minutes, and I'm gonna work as hard as I can for ten minutes. After ten minutes, it's gonna be over, okay. it, whether it's good or not. So I'm just gonna do whatever I can. So I would take short term uh, little goals, and the once I I said, okay, I'm gonna work for ten minutes. After ten minutes, I'm gonna play for like fifteen minutes. So I put another. Like or 10 minutes, I would do like uh, equal intervals. So that way I, I work hard for 10 minutes and then play hard for 10 minutes or go, you know, sometimes people, um, have you seen that meme where there's like a, an exam paper or something the student had to study? So what he did, he actually put the, like the, the, like the pieces of uh, text, whatever, like 30 pages, let's say, and he put like Twix there and then like next 30 pages, like Mars or some like, you know, uh, <laughs> snacks or yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> to motivate yourself oh i'm just gonna read yeah, yeah, these yeah. 30 pages and i'm gonna have a snack and you know uh -huh. you really enjoy those moments at, uh in contrast i love that actually when i have like difficult um written jobs or some like projects that take some amount of time and they're really intense i love them because you know the deadline is on that date Whatever happens, that date is going to come and it's just, oh, it's over. And after that, the next day is like the sweetest day yeah. of ever. <laughs> you enjoy it so Absolutely. much because you can have some uh, comparison. So, yes, um, I think uh, contrasting and always trying to balance again. Like if you have something really hard, um, like 
eat the, the elephant by piece, piece by piece, mm-hmm. as they say, like take smaller chunks and like do whatever you can because you get motivated uh, because you don't get this paralysis that, oh, there's so much work and I can't do it. I'm mm-hmm. stupid. I can't just take a little piece and like, okay, if it's good or bad, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to work with the best what I can and actually get a much better quality just because, you know, oh, it's going to be, end, you know, over soon. So I'm going to do my best. Start mm-hmm. doing your best in short intervals. So over time, you get used to this. And it's really yeah. important to remember about the life cycle of many things. Like marriage, for example, many people say that it's really important to remember that even if you have like terrible fights and everything is bad, and so some periods are like that. You just have to accept that bigger life cycles, they always have their ups and downs. So when you have that down moment, you always have to forget, like, you know, re- be- keep the big picture in your head. There's mm-hmm. another technique that people always, uh, if you're depressed, if you have a very bad mood and you think your problems are, you know, unbearable, you try to imagine the same situation in five years. Five years after this, I'm going to be somewhere else. And I'm going to think, well, five years ago, I had this problem mm-hmm. and it kind of changes your perspective. You think, oh, this problem is very much, you know, doable. You can solve yeah. the problem. And even if it looks terrible, okay, well, yeah, fine. I can, I still have my whole life ahead of me so I can fix the problem. And it's just my life is my life. It's not somebody else's. So comparison is cho- uh, is a thief of joy, as they say. Yeah. So you that's... always have to remember that that's your life, your path. Yes, you always have this temptation to compare yourself to other people. But it's you. Just respect who you are and um, give yourself a little bit more credit. So yeah, you yeah. can always more feel more confident uh, if you think, okay, this is my way. I make my mistakes. That's fine. It's it's me. I want to live my life the way I can. So. Yeah, comparing yourself to who you used to be or who you were yesterday—that's the best thing. That yeah, that's always that's so pushing hard. you forward. Yeah, it is yeah, hard it's in so the beginning. Hard to limit yourself. Yeah, to limit yourself to that. Yeah. Well, people need to understand this, that you are a completely different person than anyone else in the world. You are different. Your journey is different than everyone else. And you grew up with different conditions and everything is different. There is no point in comparing yourself to anyone else. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think this is... uh... I think it's uh, nudged by these uh, modern technologies a little bit because it's uh, yeah you understand that here but here it's different and that's why people have psychological problems because their intellect and their feelings and their bodies they, these are a whole different uh, you know different levels that's why to align them and to synchronize it's that's the hardest part so yeah I think sometimes that happens because you don't have the resources you just scroll down that you know Instagram page or whatever page and you think oh this guy is rich and this one is ritual i'm stupid uh, I didn't know that. so yeah that imposter mm-hmm. syndrome happens a lot especially to those people who are uh smart enough to have that i think that's the whole you know paradox about it people who have who lack professionalism they don't give it a second thought they think that they're amazing and those people mm-hmm. who truly have the abilities and this uh you know talents they uh devalue themselves and they say oh i'm not good enough from them and they overthink things so don't overthink sometimes you have to be that you know stupid bold guy <laughs> yeah <it> somewhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um something that you said about social media i think um uh, what they post on social media is only the best side of their life you know there is probably exactly. that's the paradox yeah. about it yeah, probably a lot of things that are fucked up in their life, but they're just not showing it to you right now. And uh, lack of knowledge about them because of distance. You think, oh, their life is amazing, but that's not me. But that's not true. That's not the whole mm-hmm. picture. Exactly. Yeah. And also you said uh, about, you know, do- about doing the work, going back a little bit, you know, negotiating with yourself to motivate yourself. Uh, that can be one way you can um, reduce reduce the uh, the amount of work in order to motivate yourself. You know, just get started. If you want to write a book, then let's just start with one page. Let's not think about the book. Yeah. That can that can be one way, or another barbaric way can be. I don't care. I'm just gonna go and write. I don't I don't care how I feel. 
Mm -hmm. That can be. Yeah, that, that requires, uh, uh, I think, the power of will. If you have that yeah. little power, you don't ask questions, you don't read motivational books, you just go and do. Exactly. The problem is that for many people, it's mm. difficult to choose what is really relevant and what requires action right now, although you're going to get the result much later. That's the, you know, that marshmallow test. Yeah. <laughs> you know the marshmallow test? Yeah, and, yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah. So. Instant gratification. Yeah, 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 I so. know. But I think it's uh, with practice, it's absolutely possible. And a man uh, that's perfected in mind like that can uh, work under any condition, you know. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, but it's it, it requires, I think, repetition, like any mastery of yeah. sword masters or like, you know, uh, good saber or good archer, all those things, they, they require repetition. Like, and repetition yes. is something that is boring and not many people in mm -hmm. this world of flashy marketing uh, uh, phrases, I think it's underestimated. In the past, this was like the, the main path. Mm -hmm. You just do this thousand times and you will understand <laughs> instead of me, yeah. you know, explaining things uh, step by step sometimes it works and don't forget like old good ways of just doing things oh yeah no matter what absolutely yeah. i read this book the compound effect by darren hardy and in the book he mentions it as he labels it as microwave mentality you know people mm -hmm. need everything instantly yeah <laughs> yeah the, the world is accelerating and i think because a lot of it driven by um vanity and a lot of it driven is driven by financial marketing and you know gains and profits mm -hmm. i think that's why it has this you know cognitive uh distortion is um, you know happens because of that because people hear the advertising all the time and mm -hmm. the thing is that the paradox about it is just that the the faulty information is the catchiest one so yeah. those you know marketing phrases they are yeah. built to attract your attention and that's Absolutely. why if you're not even interested in that thing you constantly hear messages only from marketing tools and that way you have this perception about the things that you're not aware of as if it's something easy oh do you teach english in one month or something mm. yeah do i'm all in hypnopedia or something <laughs> yeah do you have a shortcut yeah i mean but you know these are gimmicks the rarely ever work or marketing tools like you said and um like you said also uh going to the old ways again uh, believing the good old hard work and consistency and not yeah. expecting anything in return yeah because that's what makes you desperate yeah it is it is Again, the balance. I think the balance is important. It's good to combine both, like to, uh, because when you work hard too much, I think that I have that problem as well. Like you look only down. It's like it, as if you have to dig the big pit. You dig and you don't even, you know, look up. That's why you lose some opportunities that maybe you can use a pond or a lake and find an easier way to create that same foundation, but just like by draining the water or like finding some creative solutions. I think that when it comes to business, for example, that happens a lot because you get short sighted because you are focused on only hard work, hard work. But at the same time, um, sometimes you lose the bigger picture if you do only one thing. So that's why I think it's always good to um try different things and combine things for example when people lose their jobs they're really sad but i think it's great when people i made myself like i myself made around like five or six people i just nudged them off the <laughs> edge i said yeah of course quit that job we don't need that <laughs> so they left their jobs they were clinging on for years mm -hmm. and i just asked some simple questions okay are you respected there how much money do you make uh do you have this do you have that oh why would you even stay there like you it's always you know when you give this comparison and you ask these straight questions sometimes they don't think about it and they think oh okay maybe i should stay here for that and for that because they're af afraid of the change and that's why i think for mm -hmm. people choose the stability over um development so when you lose your job it's great because you can it's have great. this you know yeah you can have this bigger picture like stop digging that pit hole and like just start you know looking around and maybe you'll find that solution that is going to take the same amount of time and effort but it's going to have more fruition and more uh result. so that's yeah. that's certainly a good period to reevaluate things yeah absolutely and that safety and security of that job is also boring it's keeping you from living the life of adventure of an adventure true adventure and uh, the true adventure is um jumping into the unknown and starting at the bottom 
you know, I guess. And um, yeah, the the hard the hard work that you said. Um, I think when we're wor- doing that, you know, working hard, doing what we mm-hmm. really don't enjoy doing, but what's necessary, we're warring with our uh, primordial motivations. You know, those unconscious thoughts that distract us. But when you're mm-hmm. done with that task, what's the feeling that you get at the end of the task? It's basically invincibility and it's better than happiness. It's better than those pleasures that you would have quit for, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think it's um, it requires training as well. Yeah. Because some kids, they were just unable to, you know, <laughs> look at that marshmallow and just like say no to it. It's there. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, something immediate. That's why yeah. for many people, they get stuck in this red race just because of that, because they can't um, imagine in their head how satisfying this thing is going to be compared to this little thing that they're going to buy just to make you know whatever and they make their choices why not i think everybody's yeah. able to make choices if they, this is your, their choice it makes them happier why not maybe for, it's it's their path not everybody wants to be you know big uh, business guys <laughs> and successful people some people just enjoy buying those little things for themselves <laughs> every day why not yeah and that's fine at the end yeah. of the day yeah, yeah. yeah, if that's working Less out for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, let's wrap this up, Azinat, with um, I need some tips about relationships because I'm super weak at them. So I need some education. So if we can wrap it up with uh, one or two tips on relationships, that will be great. I, uh, I think I, I'm not the best person to ask. <laughs> I'm not, I think I'm not the best expert at uh, relationships. I used to say that I'm good at many things, but relationship is not one of them. I'm uh, happily married. This is really cool. And I think that was like a total coincidence <laughs> that I met this amazing guy and he's like, I'm so lucky. And uh, he thinks that he's lucky too. Um, but before that, I've tried and I failed many times because I, I've seen too much in people. I want maybe that's my teaching, you know, deformation. I would see the potential in people and spend too much time on helping them become that picture that I see in my head. Mm-hmm. But over time, because they got tired of it and they, it was like uh, it was a lot of pressure. Um, I, I, as I had this joke, like I always uh, raise um, good men for other women. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I guess uh, it just depends on your personality and like you choose somebody uh, who you feel comfortable with. And I think the best thing is to feel um, yourself close to somebody. But at the same time, for them, you feel like you want to be better for them just because you are inspired by their um, presence in your life. And I think that's that's really important. And also, I think, yeah, it's, it's just, again, back to balance. You have to choose your own balance. Maybe you want somebody who's going to be, you know, um, a good partner for you, like very understanding, very um, feminine, very um, supportive. Maybe you want to have somebody who's going to be more, um, you know, I don't know, more motivating, more um, inspired, aspired to do things. And yeah, it depends on the on your personality and on the personality on the other side. I think, well, I think try. That's the that's the best solution. Try sometimes, and if you see the same mistakes on your side, that something happens all the time, and and something is wrong about it, it's not them who are uh, you know to who to blame. You probably have to think about your own mistakes and think, okay, maybe it's time for me to you know reevaluate things and change my behaviors and. Oh, anyway, I'm not the best person to ask about <laughs> relationships. I think there's a lot uh, to do with luck and um, also finding that right person is always like a combination of uh, constant search and luck, I think. But still, again, I think it's good to learn. I always say that um, choose the relationships where you're going to feel more comfortable than with your own personality. If you feel on your own, if you feel better, than being in relationships you're stressed all the time and you think oh i have to do this and do that and i have to make money and she needs this and that like i think the maybe it's not the best partner for you because if you want to live for a long period of time this is long-term relationships and i think that's really important to feel somebody like to find somebody who you feel comfortable with and who you feel trust with and again it depends on what you're looking for sometimes you it's you know it's just nice to try different um variants and options and see what what's good for you and what's not 
and you'll find out more about yourself. So for me, the relationships were the way to find more about myself. I think it's really important to keep in mind that whatever happens, your relationship is not you. You is the number one uh, priority in your life. Your path, your way, your own development in the path of your soul is the main uh, purpose in life. Mm -hmm. So if you find out something good or bad about yourself, that's really good. That that means that you have to thank these people, even if you had terrible relationships or whatever. Or if it, if, it, if it was a great relationship and you feel bad after it, it's always a motivation to become better and better. So, yeah. Awesome. Zinat, you're the type of person with whom anything is possible. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thanks for inviting. I hope next time I will be more um, consistent and looking better. So, <laughs> so that way we can have another topic to discuss. So this one was more, um, you know, heavier topic. So just <laughs> yeah. listen to what I say. Don't look at me. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll, uh, we'll dig deep on these deeper topics next time. Yeah. Always ready. I like these deep conversations. Yeah. Have a nice day and enjoy your like thank you hopefully you're going to be lucky enough to find that person <laughs> sure well i think um uh, i think i need to do a lot more work on myself before i find her yeah maybe yeah maybe i definitely the, the work itself is good yeah <laughs> yes definitely again your your path is the main path and then other yes. things are helping or you know giving some experience but still it's your own way it's you in your life that's the only thing at the end of the day that, that absolutely yeah, you're alone and the journey that you put yourself through, that there is nothing more important than that. That's for sure. And these other yeah. things, they are not permanent. They will come and go. So you should not base your attachment or happiness on them. Yeah, yeah. only attach yourself to yourself and your journey. All right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. See you again. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.